All right, great nine. I hope that you are doing well. If you can remember, we have already started speaking about uh, some very important steps in order to make an advocacy campaign. And we first started by speaking about how to get our campaign off the ground first. We spoke about uh, what is the meaning of advocacy and what is the difference between advocacy and direct service. Later, we spoke about some of the most important things about uh, having your advocacy campaign of the crowd, which is uh, the rightness of your cause, uh, the power of your advocates, uh, the thoroughness uh, with which advocates research the issue, also the skills uh, in using, and uh, the most important one, the selection of effective strategies. Uh, and also, we have spoken about uh, other some important skills uh, that you need while uh, performing an advocacy campaign, including the skills we have sp spoken also about uh, how to make a plan, uh, a major plan for all things and another plan for small wins. Uh, we have spoken about how to present the issue, how to develop your own public identity and to check the facts and uh, why uh, you must keep it simple and must be passionate and persistent. We've spoken also about how to be prepared and the ability to be opportunistic and take any opportunity and change it into your favor. And also you must be creative. And why we must be on the course till the end of all the skills we have spoken about. After that, we have spoken last time about understanding the issue. I have spoken about the meaning of the issue and our advocacy. And uh, who shall be affected by that issue and the economic issue and the barriers and everything regarding the issue. So in today's session, uh, we will start speaking about recognizing allies, which is uh, an important uh, point while uh, getting your campaign off the ground. So today we'll speak about what are the allies or, or who are your allies? Why do we need them? And how do we find them? So, in question number one, Abraham, can you read please? What are allies? Allies are people uh, or groups of people who have the same interests as you or the capacity or resources to help you. Allies are essential because you can accomplish much more if there are people who believe in the cause supporting you. So once again, you need to rest in our mind you are speaking right now about an advocacy campaign and all the aspects regarding that advocacy campaign. Okay, so while performing my advocacy campaign, I need some allies. Some people to believe in my cause, some people to support me, some people have the same ideas and perspective that I have. Consequently, they will all stand by my side and we all can launch our advocacy campaign. And number two, so why do I need them? If I have my own ideas, my own cause, why do I need allies? Salem. Salem. Yad. Huh? 
Ibrahim Sekarang, where did you go? Still hear me? Hello? Can you still hear me? Read nine. Abdurrahman. Uh -huh. yes. So, Abdurrahman just spoke about the allies and that they are the people supporting us, having the same ideas and perspective that we have. So, the question here is why do we know do we need them? Why do we need allies in our advocacy? Why not just performing the advocacy campaign alone? Because simply you cannot make any major a change alone. You need some people to stick by your side to help you. So allies can help you achieve your mission. They may be willing to share also their resources and information with you with you. And by sharing these resources and also the information, you will be able to achieve a common goal. Of course, this common goal is what we see, like uh, the example we have given uh, before. A chemical factory is trying to open a branch in Riyadh. So our goal is shut it down. So the community is more likely to pay attention if more people are working towards that goal. In other words, the more help and support you have, the more you can get accomplished. So as many people as join you, you can make a change. You can make a difference. You can affect the uh, community's opinion about, of course, uh, the problem you have uh, started to make a campaign towards. The next one is how do you find allies? Where can I get them? How can I find them? Is anyone eager to listen to speak? Salim? Dr. Rahman, can you help me out? Yes. Okay. How do we find allies? The easiest way to start recruiting allies is to determine if there are already groups in the community working on your issue or working on similar topics who might be interested in working with you. For example, if you if your issue is improving for nutritional nutritional uh, value of the school lunches, the American Heart Association might be interested in helping your group or they may already be working to achieve the same outcome. One method to help uh, identify these group uh, is a community resource inventory or directory. Many resource in, inventory, inventories are available uh, pri uh, through private organizations such as the United Way or from local government organization. All right, so how do we find our allies? So, we have first spoken about that you have a problem, and regarding that problem, you need to launch an advocacy campaign. So, who are the people who might be interested in my problem or in my advocacy campaign? So, we said first you need to start by studying your own ground. What's going on? What is the problem? What are the branches of the problem? Who might be concerned with that problem and uh, after you start by uh, making that major plan you can very easily find uh, those who can help you in your problem like the example here if your issue is improving the nutritional value of uh, school lunches so regarding food 
that is being provided at a school. So consequently, I can ask the American Heart Association because the American Heart Association, their whole work and business is how to improve the heart regarding to the food and what are the nutritional values that we get inside our food, especially for kids at school. Consequently, they can just help you like that. If you went to them, and I'm trying to make a campaign about uh, the nutritional values, so they will definitely help you and also provide you with uh, the scientific information. So you just need to study your ground and later to start to identify your allies. Some other places you might uh, find information on local resources are you have the local library, the neighborhood, assistance service, uh, chamber of uh, commerce and city hall. All of them uh, include the major books that can help you to try to find out more about the problem and how to uh, solve that problem and also about the people who might be concerned in that problem. If you can't find uh, an existing resource directory for your issue, you just need uh, your group uh, can always create your own. So if you have no books, if you cannot uh, find out anything about uh, that problem, just try to figure out uh, what can you do along with your allies, with your group. And some things that uh, we want to ask, who's doing something about the issue in the community already? If I are speaking about that factory, which is uh, very hazard, very dangerous for the community. So we need to find out who's already been doing something about uh, that factory. So if the mayor is not accepted, if uh, uh, is not accepting uh, the factory, okay, so we will have him as an ally in our campaign. If uh, the government itself, some people in it uh, are not accepting the factory, then we must we must bring them as our ally. So start by searching first by those who are making it change, and then you can collect them easily as your guaranteed allies. So see what they are doing and how. Uh, it is going and which strategies and tactics of course uh, did they find effective uh, and is there uh, some way we could uh, collaborate with them and who also do we know who might be interested in the issue even though they may not uh, be acting on now so simply try to find a common ground between you right now along with your uh, campaign and those who have already started their own campaign. And then gather your efforts together. Consequently, you can be more effective. Why do we do all of that? To expand the list further. Because the more people you join in your campaign, the more effective your campaign will be. You can use, of course, the snowball technique. What is the snowfall technique? By asking your by asking your known allies to list several other groups who are either already working on your issue or who might be interested in helping your group. This technique, of course, continues by asking why or each of the allies to identify more potential partners, meaning that. If right now I'm gathering the allies, I'll get Abdurrahman in my group. Abdurrahman, he knows Salim. So he tells me, okay, Salim might be interested. So we will bring Salim. Salim knows Yusuf. So he will bring Yusuf. Yusuf knows Saad. And Saad knows Fahd. And Fahd knows Ibrahim. And Ibrahim knows Ahmad. So the more you can ask people about uh, the potential allies, okay, potential allies, they can bring you because every one of us know a lot of people. So you just need to figure out who are the people that might be interested in your cause. 
another method of course that we can use might be for you and your own group also to write down various sectors of your community so the meaning of various sectors like uh, the uh, religious organization the business the health care and then identify which of those people might be interested in our campaign and let's ask them to join us got the idea Got the idea, grid nine. Yusuf, hello. Yes. Good morning, Yusuf. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Oh, I'm still sleepy. Well, I got a Yeah, it happens to all of us. Okay. Is it okay if you read a little? Yeah, I can read it. Okay, so once again, about recognizing allies. What are the allies, Yusuf? What are allies? Allies are people or groups of people who have the same interests as you or the capacity or resources to help you. Why do you need to do that? Allies can help to achieve your mission. They can save the resources and the information to achieve a common goal. The community is more likely to be thinking if there are more people working towards that goal. No. How do we find them? How do you find allies? Make a community resource inventory. Create a directory. Or use the snowball technique. Search other sectors of the community. Of course, again, the snowball technique is totally dependable upon asking people about the potential allies that they know. Consequently, we can know a little about the potential allies. So I ask you about whom does he know, and he will tell me about whom the people that can join our campaign and the people whom he brings will also tell us about the other potential allies do you and your allies care about the same things do you and your allies care about the same thing determine which organization care the most about the issue and use a risks versus benefits table to determine who your strongest potential allies are by talking uh, by taking into consideration what they may win or lose if they decide to support your case. Right. Using your allies, which ally should you contact first? The use the power grid to determine what types of power a group has and which group would be most beneficial to your cause contact your allies so we have many many ways in order to help us in order to recognize the allies in our advocacy campaign of course uh, we need first to identify them who are the allies at the see the same people who are very cared about uh, our problem we need uh, to know why do we need them because the more you get people in your advocacy campaign the more effective you will be in making a difference uh, making a change 
How can we find them? We have many, many ways. Number one, by the resource inventory. If your advocacy is concerned with health problem, so you will find out that uh, the uh, health organization, especially for cardiac and breathing, etc., they will be very interested in your own campaign. Making a directory or using the snowball techniques, uh, both of them uh, will uh, make us ask the people in our own group about the potential allies uh, that can be joined to our group and search for other sectors this of course will enable you from knowing more and more and more about the potential allies and the community and after recognizing the allies we need to ask us one question do we us and our allies care about the same thing because if we don't care about the same thing consequently we will have different views and by having different views you will have also different results and different needs so we need to have the same thing we need to be on the same course on the same track by being on the same course and the same track we will seek the same information and also the same results for our campaign last but not least by using our own allies which ally should you contact first of course, start by the strongest, the strongest ally, the one who can make a difference. Because once you have a very, very strong ally in your campaign, then your result is your results are guaranteed. If I have one from the government, one from a strong businessman, a strong advocate he will make sure that uh, our campaign is uh, an effective and a true one any questions so far about that no So, quick video about the educators and that uh, they must be more than allies. I was a tomboy as a kid, which I know is shocking to everyone in this audience. What that meant to me was that I didn't want to look girly, but parts of my personality were feminine and I was okay with that. This really confused people and it still does. I wanted to dress like a boy and play with adventure people and trucks, but I also wanted to talk about my feelings and know what everyone around me was thinking and feeling too. You know, Ted, this organization is familiar with any of you, TED. I know Ted. I listen to some of them of their talks sometimes. So what do they talk about, Ibrahim? They talk about like not just one topic. They always just bring some people to talk about their own topic and what they did in life. That's a fact. So Ted is an organization that uh, is very very interested in uh, the advocators and uh, those who make the change. Okay, whether this change is in their life or the lives of the people associated with them. So consequently, they can bring people to tell you about their own personal experience so that we can learn from them. They can bring you some people who had started a different hobby and that hobby became uh, very, very famous like uh, Pete Box, for example. Do you know that Pete Box was not... Uh, very famous back in 2007 and ted had brought a guy play a guy playing ted uh, beatbox and he was an awesome guy 
So from that moment, pea packing started to spread. So they bring people with their own problem, uh, with their own contribution, and uh, all of them are trying to give us their experience so that we can uh, make the best use of it. I still do. I walked up the stairs of bus number three with Kitty Hope. I was excited to meet my new kindergarten classmates, get to know my new teacher, and learn all the stuff that my older brother already knew. But as I earnestly looked into the crowd of kids, my eyes were not met with kindness and smiles, but with a lot of confusion and some glares. And even though my mom tried to hide my boyishness by attempting to make me look more feminine, the kids somehow knew that I was different and that I didn't belong. I'm not exactly sure how they knew what I had not yet fully discovered, but kids seem to have a sixth sense about these type of things. And I didn't understand. I got along with all my preschool friends. Why was this any different? Why weren't the other kids as excited to see me as I was to see them? I quickly sat down by myself in the front seat. Within seconds, a girl got up from her seat at the back of the bus and walked past all the rest of the kids to sit down right next to me. Alicia was also starting kindergarten, but she grew up in the country, so she had automatically earned the respect of the kids. Her choice to come to the front and sit by me immediately shifted the entire energy of the bus. I continued to be safe for the next 10 years whenever she was around. But when she wasn't, I got hit, kicked, spit on, harassed, and called names all throughout my elementary and middle school years. As a highly sensitive tomboy with low self-esteem, I was easy prey. And even though I have learned that bullies are often the ones with unresolved trauma, it still feels awful to be treated like crap. I learned that most people are afraid of what they don't understand, and that this fear is often revealed through both words and actions. So here she's first raising her case. Raising her case meaning that she's present, presenting for us her own problem. So now we need to study that problem in order to find many solutions for it. And her problem is being harassed or not getting well with the students and some bullying. And of course, bullying is not allowed totally. So some boys were pulling hair in her elementary and kindergarten school. So we need now to understand how could she fail that. One of the most important points she said was her allies, her friend Alicia. So she brought Alicia to support her. Let's see if she is bringing more allies or not. I was not allowed to be a tomboy anymore once I entered ninth grade. I had to wear feminine clothes and makeup paint my nails, have long blonde curly hair, and not leave the house without lipstick on. I felt like I was in feminine drag. The positive side effect of my new look was that I didn't get bullied anymore. The negative side effect was that pretending to be someone I wasn't caused me such deep depression that I made a plan to take my own life. Fortunately, I had some friends and supportive adults who helped me survive. So once again, she now has a problem because she doesn't accept her situation right now and she was trying to take her life away. But by having friends and people who can support her, she now was on the right track once again. So always, guys, always find the best allies that can support your own cause because only them can make you succeed and also achieve thy dreams. Alicia died several years ago of cancer. I told her the bus story a few months before she died, but she had completely forgotten about it. To her, it was just the right thing to do. But to me, it was everything. Alicia taught me the impactful difference between being an ally and being an advocate. I wish this type of harassment was only a thing of the past, but I've witnessed my black, indigenous, and students of color be seriously harmed by racism. My LGBTQ plus students are verbally and physically assaulted. My non-Christian students are harassed and isolated. 
in my students with disabilities or mental illnesses are often called names and are consistently underestimated. Ally comes from the Latin word to bind to. Allies are supportive and they're on your side. They help you to not feel alone and they tend to be curious, open, and kind. They make people feel seen and respected. Allies are wonderful and we need them. But it is not enough for educators to just be allies. We need them to be advocates too. Advocate comes from the Latin word add a voice. These are the folks who are fighting for people's rights and taking action. The ones who are speaking up in public spaces in support of causes and equity. The people who are challenging xenophobia in school policies and in staff meetings. The educators who are writing articles and emails, creating support groups and working alongside our unions. Support is not enough. We also need to be willing to leave our comfort zones and stand up for all of the human beings who are being marginalized and oppressed. So right now she's trying to turn the point from just gathering the allies in order to get the best out of them. So how can we, after gathering those allies, use their potential powers and make that change? Because we all are not just educators, we all must be advocates, must address some certain problem and issue in order to solve that issue. Consequently, we need all to just get the best out of us so that we can make a change. I want to acknowledge that there might be some allies in the audience right now who are feeling a little uncomfortable. I see you and I honor your feelings. I know it can be terrifying to put yourself out there and that you probably didn't sign up for this when you got your teaching license, but I'm asking you to do it anyway. Minnesota's Commissioner of Education, Mary Catherine Rickard, recently reminded me that we can't expect students to conform to our comfort. Many of our students are scared and in pain, and since they don't have the same fully developed brains, resources, or support systems that we have, then it is up to us to step into our own discomfort so that we can help them. Most educators learn pretty quickly that you can follow Bloom's taxonomy of learning and create all of the dynamic lessons in the world, but they will never truly work unless we first respect Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Many of us have already heard that if we don't Maslow before we bloom and create environments where students feel safe, then there is zero hope of getting kids into their learning brains. And then we're all stuck. When I helped design and open Takata Learning Center, an alternative high school in Shakopee, Minnesota, from the ground up, I quickly learned what the students who had experienced educational and personal trauma needed to thrive. They desired inclusive spaces with soft lighting, seating options, snacks, basic school supplies, and artwork that represented a variety of cultures. So once again, she's moving another problem, another case, another campaign, which is how to get students involved in the studying. And she's telling us first that we need to find their comfort zone. After finding their comfort zone, we will be able to provide them with their needs. So, for example, if Abdurrahman needs to become an artist, so we provide him with art. Uh, Ahmad is trying to become a scientist. We provide him with the needed materials in the laboratory that can help him achieve his dream. So, by trying to find those, comfort zone first and make the student trust you. After making the students trust you, you can make that change. You can make all of them succeed. And if they succeeded, surely you will. They wanted to see themselves and what they were learning. They benefited from personalized, self-paced, voice and choice curriculum, and their engagement increased significantly when they could select text that peaked their interest. All humans deserve to be called by their chosen pronouns and names, and they should be able to use whatever bathroom makes them feel safe. Too many of our transgender, non-binary, and gender non-conforming students are not eating or drinking during the day so that they don't have to use the bathroom at school. Not only does this cause horrible medical issues, but it also causes emotional pain. A 2018 national survey by the Human Rights Campaign revealed that 73% of LGBTQ youth 
have experienced verbal threats because of their actual or perceived LGBTQ identity. It's not enough to tell kids that it gets better. We need to show them that we are making it better now. As educators, we must protect them in our classrooms and in our schools. After I learned how to create an... So again, she's speaking about how to respect everyone inside your own community and how can you present them with their needs, which will eventually help them, which will eventually be their safe resource and safe place. So she's speaking about many of the campaigns that we can start, of course, and how just we can apply the allies in our campaign. Any questions so far? No. All right. As usual, nice seeing you, great line. Bonjour. Bonjour, Salem. Comment ça va? Okay, great line. That's going to be it for today. Mm -hmm.